so you're so you've been uh, banned completely. Your channel wiped off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. You've been wiped off of Twitter several times. What about what about the other platforms? Uh, yeah, you name it. Facebook multiple times. I'm on like my fourth account, pirate account for Facebook. Uh, you know, but crazy things like LinkedIn. They just I had paid for an entire year membership and they deleted the whole thing or random things like Venmo, where they just deleted my account when I never used it for anything other than paying my exterminator, you know, just because it was connected to something else or the larger ones like PayPal. They stole thousands of dollars from me, never got it back. Patreon deleted the whole thing, stole money, never got it back. Whitney is in the same regard with with Patreon for things that are now correct. I think it was either blood clots or myocarditis when they censored the whole right. thing. Right. So so Patreon kicked you off of Patreon? Mm -hmm. Since block the whole thing. They just they will. It's one of these permanently suspended games where it's uh -huh. there, but I'm not going to delete what they want me to delete. So it just kind of stays there forever. And PayPal did this to you as well. They yeah. cut you off. That was not even a choice to do anything about it. They just booted me out, held the money under some process, and I never got it back. How long ago was that? Oh, years. I, I have How to can they hold on to that money? How can they steal the money like that? I could tell you. We, I had a real, lot of talks about this at the time. That That's a crime. There's no way around it. So what right. they argue is they they because the impl the implication is that i'm doing something illegal or wrong or whatever so they go we're going to hold it in case we need to use that money to pay for things you did wrong or pay people that might have you've stolen from or you know whatever so we're holding it just in case and after a six month process of investigation they tell you that they'll get back to you and and i've talked to at least three other people that went through the same process and never got that follow up they just kept the money and i've reached back out no response how were they able to do that? That just seems so, especially, I mean, have you been, have you been charged with a crime? No, no. I mean, that's the thing. I wasn't in fact, even violating their rules. Like that, that's the the point. It goes back to the same game about, uh, it was, I think it's either associating with, you know, promoting terrorist organizations or, you know, simply by like talking about foreign policy dynamics or something like that. And it's, it's not, you know, these, at the case, the time we talked about this, I did an incredibly deep dive on what they were claiming. There's no violation even of their own terms of service. I mean, that, it, it, how can they just take the money? I mean, that they're yeah. not even, it's not like they're paying you. It's, it's not like YouTube, right? Where, where they're running ads on your show. They're, you know, they've got an ad sales team. They're handling all of that. They're giving you a cut of the money. So it's like a business partnership. That's one thing where then they said, okay, we're going to end the business partnership and we don't want you to make any money from us anymore. Right. That, that's mm -hmm. one thing. But PayPal is just an intermediary. I mean, they're just taking money from one, holding it so that then they can yep. distribute it to another. How can they get away with stealing that money that was never theirs? It's yeah. not like they were giving you a cut from something that a, a business deal you were doing together. Yeah. And on top of that, the point that I made at the time was, look, these people sent this in in good faith to me, right? right. They, this was not to you. So at very le at the very least, you should be refunding them, right? But that's right. not what happened because I reached out to multiple people and you no, know, they never got anything back because there were like people that had like recurring donations, you know, some of them for, you know, $100 a month or stuff like right. that. And, you know, it, it not only was that money. So here's the thing too. They took the money that, that was just sitting in the account. But don't forget the the real point was that we had, I think at the time it was like three, $4,000 recurring coming through there now talk about that's a huge hit anybody in this business knows that's right. huge like that that was a like we need to reevaluate how we're going to run this business right it's, it's crazy so how are you running it now i mean what 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 um how do you collect money if you can't do it through venmo or paypal or yeah. patreon yeah i mean what are you doing now it's a it's a precarious situation and you know it's a, it's one that a lot of people are are coming to terms with and even even beyond that like people like mercola had his you know entire bank account removed and all that kind of stuff was so what i'm doing is just trying to find platforms that i think are more amenable to free speech you know yeah. like for instance right now i'm still unfortunately using stripe and i, I feel like that's the next shoe that's going to drop you know but right. it's, you just have to kind of pick your pick your choose your demons and all this right now but i i i try, I, I advocate people to send in uh, direct mailing to our to our mailbox. That's the easy way, but that could also be manipulated. Uh, or or uh, cryptocurrency donations. I've got a bunch of different things. You know, buy me a coffee. Subscribe Star. Actually, Subscribe Star yeah. is one of the few that I have never seen any, at least for me or anybody I know of, any kind of censorship. So they they've been pretty solid. Subscribe Star. I've never heard of this one. Patreon alternative, essentially. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, man, that is just really frightening. And the yeah. thought that, like Mercola, that you could be debanked, and not only was Mercola debanked, but people just working there, or, or wasn't it like a whole yeah. slew of people? Yeah, who were crazy debanked? enough, 
yeah, it was, I believe it was a COO and then like their family members. Right. right. Yeah. It was like, like that, that's explicitly what happened. It was, it was the son. I, I said, like only in regard to the COO, I forget if that's the right title, but the yeah. family members of people he worked with, they had their banks frozen. Like, think about that. Like we're talking the families and the children, you know, who have lives and, and tuition and you know, it's like it's just unparalleled. I just can't. And so this is where I see this going for sure. I just wonder when that's going to start happening or, or the trucker convoy, right? In Canada, right. they did the same thing. Well, the fact that we're even hearing the fact that I that I know a person, you, that this has happened to where, you know, where you're being where PayPal's cutting you off, Venmo's cutting you off, stealing your money. The fact that this is, you know, one one removed, right? One person removed. That is because previously we would just maybe hear stories of, oh, this happened to so and so. But now this is happening so frequently. I mean, we're hearing about it more often. The trucker convoy, as you mentioned, Mercola, yourself, the list goes on and on of the people that this is actually happening to. And so this is no longer just like, oh, that fringe terrorist that right. was uh, in their basement with their terrorist cell. And that's what they were stopping because that was really kind of the premise of, of halt of debanking somebody or of, mm -hmm. of halting payments to that person. Right. So that they couldn't commit acts of terror. They could, couldn't, couldn't commit crimes, but these are thought crimes. I mean, Mercola, what kind of crime is he committing? What kind of crime are you committing? The trucker convoy, the protests, these are thought crimes. And they're and going after people. charged with a crime, though. Like, right. And they're not even right, right. <laughs> right. There's no right. Well, because they haven't been able to figure out a way to 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 <laughs> criminalize thought as as not much. Yet. Not yet. Right. <laughs> that is just so dystopian that this is and and this is where we're headed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's just start with this one. Then this conversation, I do want to get into a bunch of stuff like the smart dust and the nanotech and and whatnot. But let's talk about the right now, the uh, where we're headed with this kind of digital world the great reset I, where where do you think this falls in would would you say this is part of a great reset would you say this is part of technocratic control would you say you know the fact that they're trying to digitize everything i went to the bank yesterday for example and when i was there at the bank i i received new cards for my bank account mm -hmm. and i i noticed that the cards looked pretty different and the banker said oh uh yeah it's because we're trying to get everybody to go digital you know, we're trying to get rid of the physical cards. So we're trying to just go, and which, I mean, the card is already tech as it is, right? It's not physical cash. It's not gold in my pocket. It's, I'm relying on this card that's connected to a bank account, which is a digitized, digitized numbers, right? right. <laughs> Hoping that the numbers still exist and that I can use those numbers. <laughs> um, but, but they are, they're wanting us to go digital. There's uh, talks of, you know, digital driver's license, right? just digitizing our whole lives. Mm -hmm. Where is this part of great reset, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the great reset is a part of the larger technocratic agenda. Like it that is like the initiative that is meant to drive us into this this technocratic age. And this is what well, the craziest thing about these conversations, it's these aren't even debatable. Like the, the, remember during the beginning of this the the term great reset was der team ter this deemed, excuse me, a conspiracy theory. Yeah, legitimately, like while there were a right. book was written about it, like it's just so ridiculous. Right. And so the same thing, like technocracy is not a, a conspiracy theory. There are people right. that legitimately believe there should be a scientific technocratic elite that ultimately make decisions. This goes back to like the 70s where this was really proposed as like, well, we should shift into a new style, which it, in, a, in an interesting way make, uh, you know, you could argue it might have even started from like a legitimate point to say our politicians are crazy and ridiculous and they don't care about us. So maybe we should lean into the the experts and let them decide, which I don't think any of that makes sense at the end of the day. But today we're watching people, I argue, trying to kind of capitalize on that idea and create a new dynamic because I think they're aware of the kind of diminishing power structure in the way it currently stands. That'd be my opinion. But I think the Great Reset is absolutely about executing a transition into, you know, the reimagining our lives for the benefit of the control structure. And yeah. th that's what, and technocracy is tapped into all the stuff you're talking about, the digital IDs. It, it allows a situation to be built. Imagine the term that we talk about is like the technocratic panopticon. You're building a situation where you may not necessarily be aware that there's anybody looking at you, but you're under the impression that you're always being watched, that everything is tracked, which is essentially what's happening. And yeah. we talked about the vaccine passports and all of that, social credit. These are all tenets of the Great Reset and what technocracy is trying to accomplish, I would argue. It's very scary uh, when I think about how dependent my own life is on tech, hmm. you know, and I think about, well, okay, if the power goes out and I mean, I don't even have a landline. I was talking to somebody the other day who has landlines anymore. And then the person brought up a good point. They said, well, what if there's an emergency and all the cell towers go out? Like maybe you should have a landline. And I thought, yeah. oh, you know, I hadn't even, 
it, we're so dependent now. We don't even think of, I, I don't even think I have a telephone jack in my house, honestly, in order to plug in a landline. I don't, I don't, wouldn't even know where to find it. I think they've all been covered up. Um, you know, but we are so dependent on tech that they really, once they get us to that point, then they really can control our behavior. That's really like, we saw that with the trucker convoy, mm -hmm. speak out, lose your livelihood, speak right. out, your bank account gets frozen. You're not able to spend money. They could, they could, uh, turn off, you know, at that point they could get your cell phone, right. The cell phone company to shut down your communications. They've already tried to shut us down on social media. I mean, these are, this is extremely frightening that I, I try to think back to when there were kingdoms and fiefdoms, right. And people right. were under the control of the monarchies, you know, how did the monarchy gain control over the people? How did they get the people to comply with the wishes of, especially like really dystopian stuff. Like there was some mm -hmm. stuff that, you know, the king would, would rape the women, you know, that, or, or whatever, right. Like all these really atrocious stories. And you wonder how did, why did people put up with this? Mm -hmm. Why did they, why did they allow this to happen? Yeah, it, well, They ahead. had a control over them, right? I mean, right. they had some level of control and maybe that type of control doesn't work today, but they've, they're figuring out another level of control, but it's the same idea, right? It's the same, like keeping the little people, the peasants yeah. controlled. It it's a perceived power dynamic, right? And that's really, and, you know, it, it's all really an illusion at the end of the day, other than like actual kinetic force and weapons and stuff like that. But the point right. being that we perceive them to be in control, to be powerful, to be, you know, all seeing and, you know, and so and, and a lot of people fall into that and don't even question these dynamics. So I think a lot more people are beginning to, but to your point about like the tech, I, I think what you said there is exactly right. In my opinion, this is about a, a, like I said before, sort of, sort of a dying power structure that's recognizing people are seeing through it and are trying to reimagine how that control can, you know, we, we're being driven into a situation where I argue they'll never need to reimagine it again, right? Like where we're going to step pushed into something where they, they don't care if we see we're controlled too late, we're already in there, you know, that's the way it feels to me. And you're right about the tech. I mean, especially being in this field. It's 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 one of the things I'm battling with every day. I'm like, I, we're, I need a new phone. My you know the old phone is getting it's getting, it's all you know planned obsolescence and all that. And I'm thinking, man, I shouldn't just go buy another Apple phone. But it's so hard to pull yourself away right. from the things that you're tapped into for the work and so on. And it's just it's so. But I know I should, you know. And it's it's very difficult, especially for the average person that doesn't truly understand or doesn't want to understand how invasive these things truly are. And, yeah. You know, like you said, it's not just about like, oh, this is for your convenience. All of these businesses are being driven in to things that are in many cases actually counterintuitive, actually more like like businesses that are promoting, you know, woke ideology, which completely hurts their bottom line. But they do it anyway. Like there's a reason that's happening. I think it's because they're being incentivized to drive this in for, for larger reasons. Like like uh, again, for example, this is a kind of an abstract one, but my brother works for a car dealership. And the dealership, even though he, these are some of the, he, he's like one of the most profitable salesmen in the entire company. And they're trying to drive them to take action that will minimize the amount of money they make ultimately because it like, fa it like digitizes and, fa and, and uh, expedites the system. And I'm thinking to myself, how does that possibly make sense? You're, you're literally asking for them to make less money for you. And I'm thinking the only way that that makes sense is if they're getting some kind of benefit from outside to justify that, like a counterbalance to say, well, don't worry, if you do the right ESG thing, you'll get some kind of kickback for it. Yeah, and I, it's everywhere I look today. I don't understand it unless there's something driving that. It's really frightening when we think about our bank accounts in particular, like it's one thing to wipe us off of social media. It's another thing to debank a person yeah. to, uh, you know, that's that's a whole different level, because how do you then support yourself? I think the only solace I have in this is that we are becoming more aware of it because they're so yes. they're because they're more blatant about it. Right. There's been people who have been dealing with this for over a decade, but we just didn't really know about them or hear about them. It was such a fringe, you know, not it, it just wasn't very common. And now it's so much more common. Um, but the one thing that I think is, well, there are just so many smart people now. They haven't been able to fully crush education. Um, and be, although I do feel like there is an attack on education, I, I think that's like multifaceted this. Yes. Do we have a problem with our ed education s system? Certainly. Like, is there too much wokeism? And yeah, I 100% I, I agree with that. But I also think that there is this undercurrent attack on education where people are being told you don't need it. Well, mm -hmm. that's the way you, you telling people they don't need education is that's how you control people. You keep them stupid. If you could keep people dumb. Yeah. Then that's, it's a, it's a form of control. So, um, but we do have educated people still and they will build alternatives. You know, people will revolt ultimately and they'll figure out ways to build new systems 
and to convert every, and then as they shut that down, then we move on to the next one, you know, like a swarm. We're just like, yeah. where do we go next? Where do we go next? Where do we go next? And I think that that, as that swarm continues to move and move and move, as they're more blatant about it, more the, the swarm gets larger. And so that's the one thing that kind of brings me some thinking of like, yeah, they think they can do, they think they can pull this off, but the masses are just bigger. There's more of us than there are of them. And so yeah. maybe we could pull it off by just being a swarm. Yeah. Maybe. No, I, I, no, I agree that I, I think people are truly seeing through it. I mean, we, and, and we have examples of, of that, what you're talking about. Like, for example, I, like uh, James Lyons Weiler and IPAC. You know, like a tan, like a a new a new peer review process that doesn't need the system to be involved in it. You know, or mm -hmm. or Richard Grove and autonomy making like their own kind of schooling system. You know, and like that that is, I think the the new people are looking for something outside of the control structure. But to your point about education, that's such an interesting thing. It, it's it's the, it's the it's the two party illusion, right? It's the dynamic of creating the false dichotomy, and then and then you know the truth is in the middle somewhere, and people are on the two sides of it. Like so, you yeah. know, all education is bad, or you know, it, you know, it, it's so interesting. I see the same thing with like the term sustainability, where you know they're they're pretending they're fighting for sustainable things, so it creates this pushback on actual sustainability, even right. though that's not even what they're fighting for. And so it's it it I, I think this is all of what we're dealing with. It's like kind of binary two party illusion kind of mindset, at least in this country more than anywhere else. But I think it's important to seek out these alternative platforms, like you said. And yeah, if they destroy them, build another one. That's the only way we can fight it. Right, right. And they, they've proven that they're good at destroying. We I mean, look what happened to Parler. I mean, that was like right. unreal what they did to that platform. Uh, that was growing fast and then they just shut it down. I mean, it was just yeah. insane. Hey guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like this segment. Now you might be wondering, this seems like it's part of a bigger show. You're right, it is. The full show is at KimIversonShow.com. So what you're watching is just a clip. And if you wanna get the full experience, then you gotta go to KimIversonShow.com. The show airs Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. That is where you can watch the full show. Here, you just get clips. So click on the link down below, go to the full show, enjoy. Otherwise, I'll see you next time right here. And be sure once again, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.